Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our series of lectures on the Statement of Cash Flows. In the prior few videos, we've been preparing Statements of Cash Flows with increasing complexity. In this video, we're going to prepare the Statement of Cash Flows for Gazelle Corporation. There are some new complexities in the company's financial data that you need to know how to handle on a Statement of Cash Flows. So I strongly recommend that you download and print the PDF version of the worksheets or download the Excel workbook so you can follow along and practice with the video. Let's examine the financial data we have for Gazelle. Looking at the balance sheet, we can see that there are only a few current assets and all of their balances decreased during the year accounts receivable, merchandise inventory, prepaid expenses, balances all decreased. Remember for a statement of cash flows, we ignored the changing cash for right now. Do you remember how to handle the decrease in current asset uh, balances in an operating section of the statement of cash flows from the prior lectures? Remember that changes in current asset accounts will have the opposite effect on net income. So all of these decreases in these current asset accounts will increase net income in the operating section. We can also see that there is only one current liability account and its balance decreased. From prior lectures, you probably remember that a decrease in accounts payable will be shown as a decrease in net income in the operating section. Now let's take a look at the income statement. As always, we can identify depreciation expense as a non-cash expense that must be added back to net income in the operating section. But a complexity arises from the $2,100 loss on sale of equipment. This was not a sale of inventory in the ordinary course of business. This was a sale of equipment that had been used in the business, depreciated, and no longer needed. So the company sold that equipment. Exhibit 12.4 shows you that cash received from the sale of long-term assets and cash paid for the purchase of long-term assets should be reported in the investing section of the statement of cash flows. So this $2,100 loss is not an operating loss. Accordingly, we need to add it back to net income in the operating section to calculate net cash provided or used by operating activities. More complexities exist for Gazelle Corporation in the liabilities section of the balance sheet. For the first time, you have a company to deal with that has long-term notes payable. If you remember, cash received from long-term borrowings and cash paid on long-term debt should be shown in the financing section of the cash flow statement. So we're going to have to identify how much cash was received and or paid on the long-term notes payable during the year and report those receipts and payments in the financing section of the Statement of Cash Flows. Finally, let's look at the additional information we have. Number A, sold equipment costing $51,000 with accumulated depreciation of $22,850 for $26,050 cash. The only piece of information we need for the statement of cash flows 
is the 26,050 cash received from the sale of the equipment. All other information is good information, but does not get reported on the statement of cash flows. Number B. Purchased equipment costing $113,250 by paying $43,250 cash and signing a long-term note payable for the balance. Again, the only piece of information we need for the statement of cash flows is the $43,250 cash paid. All other information is good information, but does not get reported on the statement of cash flows. Let's look at number C. Borrowed $5,000 cash by signing a long-term note payable. This would be treated as cash received in the financing section of the statement of cash flows. Number D paid $47,500 to reduce long-term notes payable. Again, changes in long-term liabilities that arise from the receipt of cash or the payment of cash all flow through the financing section of the statement of cash flows. Number E issued 3,000 shares of common stock for $15 cash per share. 3,000 shares sold for $15 per share equals $45,000 cash received and it does equal the entire change in the common stock and paid in capital account. And if you remember, changes in equity get reported in the financing section of the cash flow statement. And the last item is declared and paid cash dividends of 53600 also gets shown in the financing section. So let's get started. On the line paper I gave you, you should enter the three line heading. Gazelle Corporation Statement of Cash Flows for the year ended December 31st, 20X2. Then refer, refer to UMA example for, to keep us on track with our format. We start out with cash flows from operating activities, net income, then the words adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash provided by operating activities, income statement items not affecting cash. Go ahead and finish up to this point and then start your video again and check your work. Cash flows from operating activities, net income from uh, the income statement for Gazelle was $158,100. Adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash provided by operating activities, income statement items not affecting cash. The first thing we're going to do is add back depreciation expense. And the next thing we're going to do is add back that non-operating loss on the sale of equipment. Depreciation expense, add back or increase net income, 38600 Loss on sale of equipment, add back or increase net income, 2100 I want to show you something very quickly here. The reason we add back this loss on sale of equipment is because it was subtracted from income to arrive at net income. And if that's not an operating loss, then it should not, this, this number should be bigger by that amount of money. Had that been a gain on sale of equipment, it would have increased income. Therefore, it would have had to have been subtracted out. So, because it's a loss, it did reduce our income 
to arrive at net income, so we have to add it back in, just like we have to add back in a non-cash depreciation expense. So what's next? Changes in current assets and current liabilities, <clears throat> and I think you know how to handle those. So go ahead and type this line in, and then put in all your changes in current assets and current liabilities as shown on the balance sheet for Gazelle, and then calculate your net cash provided by operating activities. And once you finish that, start the video again to check your work. Changes in current assets and current liabilities. Decrease in accounts receivable. Add back 3650. Remember, changes in current assets have the opposite effect on net income. If an accounts receivable decreased, then increase net income. Decrease in merchandise inventory, positive 10100 Decrease in prepaid expenses, positive $1,900. And then we switch to our liabilities, which have the direct or same effect on net income. Decrease in accounts payable, negative 84250. Decrease in a liability will decrease net income. Then calculate your net cash provided by operating activities, plus, 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 minus, and more cash came in than was paid out. So we have net cash provided by operating activities, $130,200. We only have a few minutes left in this video and we won't be able to finish this cash flow statement. So I'm going to end this video and in the next video, we will uh, prepare the investing and financing activities sections with those extra complexities that we talked about earlier and finish up the statement of cash flows for Gazelle Corporation. That's all for now. See you next time.